Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. I'm really excited about this project because this bracelet is something I've been wanting to do for actually a couple years now. And when I first got the idea to do this, I wanted to do a square stitch bracelet, but instead of doing one bead at a time, I wanted to do two because it makes it faster. And I've done this before when I made American flag earrings. So think of it kind of like peyote. When you do peyote, you do one seed bead at a time or you can do two or three at a time so there's like two drop three drop it makes it a faster uh, process so um I wanted to do two beads at a time I wanted to do square stitch I wanted to decorate the top of it with flat beads and I wanted to do a pico edging so I went online because I wanted to do cubes as my base because, I, I don't know, I had this idea of, in my head of what I want to be like. So, I wanted to do it with cubes. This one here is done with cubes. And it's really flashy. I love how it looks. It looks like tiles. It's so pretty. So, um, I went online and I discovered that Miyuki cubes are actually very expensive. Most of the stores I found, you can get 10 grams for like $3 and up. It depends on the color you get, the finish of the bead. So, um... I knew that would be way too expensive to make this bracelet, so I didn't do it, and I put it off. And um, I went to Hobby Lobby, and I discovered that Hobby Lobby has cubes. There's 114 grams in one tube, and it's $5.99. Here's the size of the cube, 3.5 millimeter. And um, I think these are usually on sale. I got these 40% off, and I think that at $5.99, that it's actually pretty decent, because... You know, that is a lot of beads. 10 grams for Miyuki was $3, so look at that there. That is a pretty good deal at $5.99. But I think that these are usually on sale 40% uh, off at Hobby Lobby. And they come in a lot of colors. So the first time I went there, I got three different colors. And um, I realized that I should have got more, so I actually put this project off. And the next year for my birthday, I went back and I got more of them. And, um... When I first started working on this bracelet, I did a couple inches, like two inches, you know, a sample. So this was the first one that I did, just a little sample. And um, I sat these beads on top. I did not stitch them in. I just sat them on top. And, um, you know, I picked the colors out that I wanted. So I set this bracelet to the side because I wanted to do this one in the video. So I didn't actually sew the beads onto the top. I just sat them on top, you know, planning out what I was going to do. And then I thought I should do some different beads other than the cubes. And so I had bought a whole bunch of vintage Venetian seed beads that are ninos. But I discovered that the ninos are actually closer to 80 seed beads because when I compared the ninos to my Czech ados and my Miyuki ados, they were closer. The ninos were closer in vintage Venetian to the ados in the other brands. So um, I used those for the base of this. And I decorated the top of it with these Millifori square beads that I bought a very long time ago when I was a kid when Michaels just started selling the um, bead gallery collection. They used to have a display in the center um, aisle where you, you know, the main aisle where you walk through and it was just beads on this cardboard display. They did not have a huge aisle of beads. This is when they first started selling it. So these were very, I bought them a very long time ago and I, I always loved them and um, I think that it, this bracelet really shows off how beautiful they are. And these little hearts here from my aunt and I just um, did the pico edging with white and black on the sides and um, 11 -0 check. And I used a cut button. So this was the first one that I completed, okay? And this one I wanted to do in the video. And then um, this one here was the next one that I did. And this one, I love this one so much. And my mom and sister are uh, wanting it. So um, I don't know. I'll see how it goes. Um, Lisa gave me these hearts. They are so gorgeous. They're really pretty. These little round beads with the gold on them, I got them from Michael's. Again, I got those a long time ago. And these here, I think I just recently got from Michael's not too long ago. Those are really pretty. I love those. And um, the seed beads I did are Preciosa. Um, I think it's called Turquoise Marble, something like that. I got these from Shipwreck Beads. 
and I did a 10-0 uh, silver line gold on the edge and another cut button and I just love how this turned out it is so cool and I staggered the flat beads on top of this one they are not side by side like this one okay so I did these two these were complete so I went to go do this one in the video and it didn't turn out the way I wanted I did the whole base and I was actually going to film this like three four days ago and I had it all planned out and it didn't work out so here I am late filming this because it didn't work out and what happened was um, I'm telling you this because you may might run into the same problem and if I don't tell you and if it happens to you you'll be annoyed so forgive me for a long video because I just want to make sure you guys have no problems so um this one here because I'm doing two drop square stitch I have the beads side by side right and the cubes they're flat so when they come together I found it too hard to get a needle in between them so for this one I was only able to decorate the very center here I wanted to actually use bigger beads that were as long as this pink is but I couldn't get them to work because I could not pass a needle through the holes right here through here and through there there's no way that I could do that and um I actually decided on this one not to do the pico edging and um, these bracelets take a lot of thread 24 feet is how many feet you need to make this bracelet um, this one here actually took more and I guess because it's the cubes and it is kind of bigger than these I actually I did 24 feet for you know the square stitch and decorating the top and when I got done decorating the top, I didn't have enough to do the pico edging, but for these two here, I did. So I would actually have to add another uh, thread to do the pico edging, but I think I like it without the edging because of the cubes. So um, that is something I discovered. If you're going to do the cubes and you're going to do the two drop square stitch, um, you won't be able to do as much decorating on the top like I did with these here. So. Um, if you don't have cubes, just go ahead and use 6-0 seed beads like I did in this one, or 8-0s. I don't recommend doing 11-0s or 10-0s um, for your base because we're going to be going through the beads so many times. Doing the square stitch, decorating the top, and then doing the pico, and it, you're not going to have enough space inside the beads. So this is a very fun project. I love it so much. Um, this is definitely one of those projects where you can go through all of your beads and pull out some cool things. Um, I went through all of my beads when I started working on this and I picked out all the beads that I had that were flat. So I'm going to show you the beads that I picked out and go through them with you and just give you some ideas of what you can use to embellish the top of this bracelet. So I went through all of my beads and I picked out all the beads that were flat and as you can see I have all different shapes and sizes of beads here and all of these will work, believe it or not, in those bracelets I just showed you. So these here are some round flat beads. Um, these have a peacock finish on these. I got these from Joann's not too long ago. They should still have them. They're gorgeous. I almost used these. Um, here are some large hearts these would work. Here are some leaves. The hole in the leaf is going in this direction, down the center. Those would work, and I really want to use some leaves. I thought that would be cool. Here are some oval-shaped ones. These are pretty thick, so they will set up a little higher in your bracelet. These also have a peacock finish, like these two. Um, here are some more hearts. Flowers will work. These have the hole, you know, going through the center, like that. These will work for the project. Here are some more flowers. Here are some more leaves. Those will work. Here are some hearts. These are table cut hearts. Those are pretty neat. Those will work. Here's more flowers. Here's some little squares. These I got in a dollar bead box. I almost used those too. Those are pretty. Here's some more leaves. More hearts. More leaves. Here's some triangles. Um, more hearts. Here's rectangles. I love these so much. These are gorgeous. They're really cool. Um, here are some hearts that I got from the dollar bead box. These will work. I actually wanted to use these. These were my first beads that I got that I would use for this project. Um, but I, I ended up not using them. Um, these will work. These are little butterflies. 
Here's some more rectangles. So here are some ideas of the stuff you can use. You can use all different sizes and shapes of beads as long as they have a flatness to them so they sit properly on your bracelet. So um, this is just an idea of the kind of stuff you can use. So go through your stash. See what you have. Look through everything. Actually, I just realized I didn't check through my faceted glass beads. And I know that I have some flat ones in there. I should have done that. Darn it. Anyways, it's too late now. So go ahead, go through your stash, look through everything you got, because I know that you're going to have the stuff to make this bracelet. It's going to be a lot of fun. Here is the list of materials you will need to make a bracelet. So I discovered that you will need 24 feet of thread to make this bracelet. What I like to do though is I like to do 12 feet as, at a time. I was actually very comfortable working with 12 feet of thread and I was thinking about bumping up to 16 but I thought you know I'll just stay at 12. It's working great. I'll just do 12. So I cut 12 feet. I did most of the base of the stitch and then I cut another 12 and I was able to complete the rest of the bracelet. Now like I said earlier for this one I did not have enough um, thread to do the pico edging but I actually like it without the edging so I went without it so um it's up to you what you want to do but again you will need to cut two 12 foot pieces of 8 pound fire line you can use 6 pound if you want and um by the way I've really discovered over the years that whenever I work with another thread for example Nymo it tangles very easily because it is um curly and it's like bouncing all around because it's curly so um with Fireline it has a wiriness to the to it and it's less likely to tangle I did have some tangling but it was not bad I was able to get out of it every time with Nymo I've had knots that I could not get out of and I had to you know give up and start over again so fire line really is the way to go you're also going to need a beading needle I'm using the toilet beading needles these are the best I've used the same one over and over and it is still straight it's amazing you also need beads for your base and I'm using 60 seed beads these are check seed beads you can also do 80s like in this one or you can do the 3.5 millimeter cubes you're also going to need flat beads and for this one I'm doing these um, rectangle beads that have a peacock finish on them. I got these from Michaels. I'm using these here. These are from Dollar Bead Box. They didn't come in a box. I went online and I bought them straight from their shop. Those are really cool. And um, you're also going to need seed beads for the Pico edging. Now here's the thing. When I did the 60 seed beads for the base and I went to do the Pico edging, I tried doing 11s but they wouldn't work. The thread was being exposed, it was bunching on the side, it was not laying right so I need I knew I need I knew, blah, blah 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 blah. I knew I needed to go up to a bigger size, so I went to a 10 and it worked just fine. And I'll show you a close up. See that there? There bigger. They're Tenno seed beads. They actually look kind of like um, Delicas because they're kind of a barrel shape. So if you want you could do uh, Tenno Delicas if you have those. Now for this I would also do a Tenno seed bead. Okay. For the 8 base here that I did I did 11 O's in check and it worked out just fine. Now for this project I'm doing the video, I don't have a tenno that I like, in the color that I like to go with these beads and with these here. So what I'm doing to go around that is I'm doing um, 8 O's and 11 O's. These are both Toho, I think. Yes, the, both of these are Toho's. So I'm doing 8 O's and 11 O's for the Pico edging because I don't have tenos, so this is another option you can do. Now for the button, you can do whatever button you want. I'm doing a cut button because I happen to have cut buttons to match my bracelets, but if you don't, you can use another button. Really, you can use whatever button you want because you can make the loop 
for your button any size to accommodate your button so it's up to you so it's just that little thing right there that you have to remember about the seed beads you know whatever seed beads you do in your base if you're doing 6 O's you have to do a 10 O or do this do an 8 O and an 11 O if you're doing this again you will need a 10 O if you're doing 8 O's for the base you can use 11 O seed beads um, if you try to do 11 O's with the 6 O's you will see that it doesn't work right you have to do a 10 so uh, that's a little issue I had so um that's it so remember I always put the list down there below the description bar along with other things notes and stuff so make sure you look down there and this is everything you will need to make the bracelet let's get started so doing the square stitch and adding the button this right here what I have in front of me takes a few hours just to do by itself so I already went ahead and I have this done I took 12 feet of thread I left a six inch tail I started the weave added my button and I continued the weave until I had a eight inch tail left over okay so I will come back to this one first what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little sample with you guys I'm gonna show how to do the stitch add the button and then I'll leave you okay and I want you to continue doing this stitch until you have uh, enough thread left to, for tying knots okay and then we'll come back and add a second piece of thread a second 12 foot piece of thread and I actually don't tie it in and I don't tie this one off I leave the tail there because we will have to continue going through these beads so what I do is I just weave through the end here my new thread and I continue this weave and I do my button loop and then I decorate the top and then I do the pico edging on the sides so I'm gonna set this to the side for now and I'm going to show you how to do a little sample for this um, because I don't want to waste my thread I'm actually kinda low on fire line I am doing Nymo which is my least favorite thread and as you can see see how it's like all curled up because it does this it gets tangled up easily now if you do um, beeswax on it it does help it out with the tangling but still it is not a very strong thread you can br break it just by pulling it like that with your hands and it snaps so traditionally when you do the square stitch you have a stopper bead and you know learning through the years I've done the stopper bead way and I really actually don't like it because sometimes the stopper bead can get stuck on your thread and it's not really staying in place it slides up and down so you have to pass it multiple times so it just becomes a problem so I found a way to make this without using a stopper bead so what I do is I pick up four beads okay and remember we are doing um, more than one bead at a time so normally we pick up one bead at a time in a stitch I'm gonna do two beads at a time so it's kinda like two drop square stitch so I'm picking up four I'm doing six O's for my base in this bracelet I'm sliding this down and um, I want to leave a six inch tail because I will have to come back later and tie knots so I just measure out like this I can see right here's my six inch mark so I'll hold it here I'm going to take my needle pass back through all four of these beads just like that okay I have this now I'm going to take the needle and just pass through these two pull through and this is what I have so this is actually my new stopper bead so because this is a sample piece and I don't have a lot of thread here I'm just gonna slide this down but you will want to keep a six inch tail on this you do need that um, extra tail for tying knots okay so this is what I have just like that I'm going to have six rows of beads so I'm going to pick up let's see it's four now okay because this is my six rows and then I'm going to pick up two more and these are going to be stacked on top of the last two so I have this so I'm going to take my needle skip over these two 
and I'm going to pass through these two. So this is differently. I am doing this differently than how it's traditionally done this stitch. It's my own little spin on this project. Also, I found that with Nymo thread, you, you can easily pierce the thread, which is not good. So now I have this. I'm going to take my needle, pass back through those two right there, okay? Hold this in place. Now I have this. Now I have to pick up two beads. And I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to pass back through these two. Okay, and because I'm using Nymo, it's all loose on me. Okay, there we go. So that should be flipped over like that. Okay, I'm coming out here. I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to go up through these two and up through these two, just like that. Pull the thread through. Now I have this. Okay, we do need to come back and reinforce this, so what I do is I take my needle and I pass through all of these beads here just like that. Now I'm doing six rows of beads but if you want you could do eight or ten but you will need more thread that's the whole thing it's gonna take more thread but if you have like large flat beads that you want to use you could definitely use more beads in a row. So now I'm gonna go back up this side so this is um, tightening up our work here okay now I'm going to add another row and then after the the next row my third row I will be doing the button so I'm picking up two seed beads and I'm gonna go through these two here okay and then I'm gonna pass back through them again like this hold it in place with your fingers and pull it through and now I'm going to pick up two seed beads again and I'm going to go through these two, just like that. Okay, and then I have to go back down the two I just added. Then I'm going to pick up two C beads again and pass through these two. And then I'm going to go back down those two. Just like that. We have three rows. So now I am going to add my button. And I realize that my lighting is not at its best. I usually move the lamp closer. So there we go. I hope that's brighter. So now, to add the button, I'm going to have the button holes like this on the bracelet. So I'll show you this one. See how the holes are like that? Going in that direction. All of them I did like that because I realized it makes it easier to put the bracelet, to close the bracelet. It, it just makes sense for it to be like that in that direction. So. What I'm going to do is take my needle and pass through three beads, okay? I'm coming out right here. I'm going to have the hole of my button right here. One hole there, one hole here. So going through three, I'm going to pick up one of the 6 -oh beads. You want, for underneath the button, you want to do the kind of bead that's in your base. So see how I did two cubes there below this button? Because when you close this, you need it to be the same thickness as these beads here, see? So it closes properly. See what I mean? It's the same thickness. Okay, so I'm picking up a bead. I'm picking up my button. I'm going to go to the bottom. I'm picking up three 11 o or 10 o c beads. Sliding them down. Okay, so 
so it's going to be attached right here. So now I have to take my needle, go through the other side of my button, okay, pick up another 6-0, and I'll just go ahead and slide all this down. So I have this, 6 O's on one side, 11 O's on the other side. I'm coming in this direction out of this bead and I picked all that up. Right there is my tail so you have to remember which side you're coming out of because you might get lost. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this bead, just the one, okay? Pull this on and there we are attached to this side but I'm not attached to that side yet. So what I have to do, and this is a little tricky to see, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to pass through the two in the center. Okay? Just like, actually, am I doing this right? I come through there, I have to come out the middle. Yeah, okay. So I have to go through this one. Okay. And then I'm going to flip it and come through the next one on this side. See that? Now, so it's attached on both sides, I'm going to take my needle, pass up through the button, and through the 11 of seed bead, just like that. So now we're attaching it to the other side of the bracelet, through that one seed bead there in the middle, I'll have to go for that one. And then down through the 11 of through the button, and through that 6-0. And now I have to go through this one and pull that through. So now if you look see that there? I have a thread path going this way one going that way and one going that way. It's kind of like a triangle. So we should have that on both sides and we do connecting our button, okay? And then just pull it very tight and now what I have to do is reposition my needle to continue this stitch. So I'm going to take the needle, pass through the two beads there. Okay, and then I'm going to come down through all of these. That's what it looks like. I hope that made sense to you. So we actually went through the button twice. Okay, now we have to continue our stitch. So I'm going to pick up two seed beads and I'm going to go through these two. Just like that. Then I have to pass back through them again. Hold it between your fingers so it doesn't loosen up. Okay, and there we go. I'm going to add another two. Go through these two here. I really, really wanted to do a bunch of these bracelets with the cubes but because I'm doing two beads at a time it made it too tight to pass back through the beads and embellish the top just kind of a bummer bummer but um I think if I did do one cube at a time with the traditional square stitch that I probably could decorate the top more because then there would be more air in between the beads okay so now I have two more to add going through these two beads then I'm going to go back through those two I just added and pull that tight sometimes I slide these together because like with the cubes when I did those just pulling this tight didn't work I also had to push these together and, and pull it tight to get it to be the right tension. Okay, I'm going to pick up two again. I'm going to go through these two. It's kind of like I'm making little circles around the bead when I sew through it. Okay, pull that tight. Hold it in place with your fingers. Pass through these two that you just added. Picking up two seed beads, I'm going to pass through these two. 
pass through these two again. See how I let go of that there? And the thread got caught. That's why I usually hold it between my fingers. Because if you don't, it'll get away from you. Then your thread will get caught somewhere else. Picking up two. Passing through these two. And then going back down through these two here. It's very simple. And as you can see, doing two beads at a time makes this go a lot faster than doing one. So I'm just going to keep going. Picking up two, passing through two. Pulling it tight. Now I have to pass through these two that I just added. Hold it between my fingers. Pull that tight. Pick up two more. Go through these two here. And then going through these two here. Picking up two more. And then going back to those again. This is a really fun stitch. I really enjoyed making this project because I could just sit down, watch TV, and do it. And I really didn't have any mistakes. Because you're just repeating the same thing over and over. It's really nice to work with this. Now I'm going to pass down through these two beads. And the Nymo always wants to come off my needle. So I constantly have to pay attention to that. But hopefully you guys aren't using Nymo. You're doing Fireline. I'm just doing the Nymo for demonstration purposes. Because I don't want to waste my expensive Fireline. Okay, two more. Pass down to them. So it's pretty simple. Just keep going, doing this stitch until you have this much done. Okay, I, I, I left off with an 8 inch tail. If I did another row, it left me with 5 inches. It's not very much to tie off with. So I took the row back out and now I have 8 inches. So it kind of seems like no, maybe not. Anyways, keep going, doing this stitch until you've done most of your thread and you have an 8 inch tail or, you know, enough tail to tie knots. And then I'll show you how to add a new thread. And I have to go find my thread. I don't know where I put it. So I went ahead and I cut another 12 foot piece of fire line and I slid my needle about 3 feet down my thread. See, right there is my end. Um, doing this, sliding it far down your thread makes it easier to work with because it's like you have less thread but you actually don't. So I slid my needle far down and um, when you do this you have to make sure that your, your tail does not get stuck in your work as you're weaving. So as your tail gets close to your work you have to slide your needle down your thread so your second tail doesn't get caught. So I'm going to start by taking my needle and passing through this entire row of beads, okay? My other tail is over here, the last tail I had, so I'm going to have a new tail coming out this side. Let's pull it through, and I want to leave a 6 inch tail on this side also. And I'm not going to tie any knots right now. I leave all the threads left for the very end to tie off because if I were to start tying knots right now I have to come back through here and embellish the top and if I tie knots I'm not going to be able to pass through these beads because there will be knots clogging the hole so I always save the knots for last so I'm going to measure out a six inch tail which is right here so I'll hold this spot I'm going to continue the stitch just like before picking up two beads I'm coming out right here so I'm going to pass through these two beads take the needle pass up through these two and then pull my thread through so this is 12 three feet of thread and you can see that it has the stiffness it's like wiry so it makes it easier to work with I'm just gonna make sure that I have six inches and I didn't lose it because it can be hard tying it it off 
with shorter than six, so. So now I have a, a tail on this side, and I have my tail on that side. Okay, right there it is, six inches. Perfect, now I'm good to go. So I'm just going to hold these two out of my way and continue this weave. Picking up two, going through the next two there. And this is a great workout, by the way. But I'm right-handed, so I'm only working out one side. <laughs> I really do think I could uh, actually do more than 12 foot. I wanted to try it, but since I was doing so well with 12, I thought I would just stay with it. Picking up two more, going through these two here. I just got caught on my chair, I think. Yeah, I'm stuck in my chair. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to get that. So anyways, you're just going to keep continue doing this weave until you get um, it to fit you. So what I did, I'm stuck in my chair right now, but you want to wrap this around your wrist, okay? And you want to get this very close to your button and have it sit just in the right spot. And when this edge gets right up close to your button, then you know you can add the loop. So I'm going to get it unstuck from my chair. I'm going to continue this weave and show you how to add the loop for your button. Now, for the button loop, what you want to do is take your button, whatever button you want, and you want to set the button on your beadwork, and you want to see how many rows the button takes up. So sitting my cut button upside down, I could see that it takes up three rows and six O seed beads. For this bracelet, I did eight O's and I had to do four rows of eight O's right there. See that? Four rows of eight O's for my cut button. But if you're using a different button, then you may need more or less. I don't know. It just depends. So just take your button, sit on your bracelet. You can kind of tell how many rows you will need to do for your button. This one here is six O's, so I can tell again that I'm going to have to do three rows right there for my button. So I'm going to set those aside. This one I did the cubes, and I only had to do three cubes for my button to pass through. Okay. So again, I'm going to take and get my tails out of my, out of my way, and I'm going to start working on the loop for my button. So I'm going to pick up two six O's. And I'm going to pass through these two beads. Okay. Pull the needle through. I got a new chair a few months ago. And when I received it, I realized that it was a very terrible chair. And I tried to return it and they wouldn't let me. Because I already put it together. But, um... I've only had it for a few months and it's creaking all the time and it's the creaking is worse than my old chair and it's just driving me crazy just turning any little move I do it makes a creaking noise okay so I just put those uh, two beads on and I'm going to pass through these again now this time I will not be picking up two more beads right there because I need a gap so I'm going through these two okay pull that tight. I'm actually going to take my needle this time and pass through those two and come back out through here. So I'm going to pass through this again as you can see I just did to reinforce this for my clasp area. So now I'm going to pass back through these two beads. Pull the thread through. Did you hear my chair creaking? Any little move. Creak. <laughs> drives me crazy. I don't know if oiling would help it stop doing that. I don't know. I know there's grease in the bottom because I accidentally touched it one day and I got grease all over my hand. Okay, so now I have to pick up two more beads. And I'm going to go through these two. I'm sure you guys hear my chair creaking all the time now. That's why I was talking about it. So now I have to take the needle and pass back through these two that I just added. Okay. Pull that tight. 
and I have to go back through these two because I need to have this be reinforced because there's a word my buttons going through and then back out through these two again so if you look we have three threads on one side and two on the other okay now I need another row so I'm gonna go ahead pick up two more beads and pass through those two again Okay, now I have to reinforce this, go back down through, pull that tight, and then back through these again. Pull that tight. Now I'm actually going to keep going because I need to have two rows down here. I was first thinking to do one, and then I just realized that it did not look good that I needed to do two rows at the end. So I've already done three, and I actually have to do two more for my end there. So I'm going to keep going and do two more rows. So it's kind of like I'm doing five. But, again, if you're doing a different button, maybe you're not using a cut button, maybe you have a metal button or something, you would have a different amount than the chances are. Okay, so I have to reinforce this. Go back down. Okay, there's four rows. I need another row. So I'm going to pick up my two beads, pass through these two. And then pass through these two. Now it's time to reinforce. So back down through them. that tight and then back out through these two again okay so now we're gonna add this part right here which is sort of like how we started the bracelet so I'm coming out let's make sure yeah I got my five rows okay so I'm coming out here I'm going to pick up the four beads that I need right for the end and then I'm going to pick up two more that are going to stack on top. So slide all these down. Okay, so there's the six that I need for my row. These two are going to come over and lay on top of those two. So slide those two down, take the needle, and pass back through those two. Pull the thread through. Slide this needle, not needle, thread, down. So now I have this. Now I have to hold this between my fingers so it does not loosen up. Pass the needle through these two beads. Hold it between your fingers. Pull that through. Pick up two six O's. Okay. Coming out here, I have to go through these two in the middle. Just like that. and then back through them again and then go out those two right there so pull the thread through pull it tight now take the needle and pass through this back side here reinforcing that And actually, I think I'm going to go through it again because the other bracelet, I only did it one time and there's one thread path through here and it's bothering me. It's this one I did it. Right here, see how it's like really wiggly? I only went through that one time, so I think I'm going to go through this a second time. 
So I'm going to go through here again. I actually need to be exiting out here in order to add more beads. So I have to make sure that I come out there when I reinforce it a second time. Okay, so now I have two threads going through that side. And this side I think I actually have three now, which is fine. Okay, coming through here. And now I'm going to pass through these two, and we're going to continue on with our stitch. Okay, so now I have this. Right now, if you want, you can go ahead, try this on, wrap it around your wrist, because you can kind of see, like if you're using a different button, if it's going to work. You know what I'm saying? All right. So now I have to continue my weave. I just passed through those two. I keep calling it a weave, but it's actually a stitch. I'm going to pick up two seed beads. I'm coming out on this side, so that means I have to pass through this side. Come through here. I have to add three rows in this loop for my button to pass. But again, if you're using a different button, you may have a different number, so... Reinforcing this, just like I did earlier. Pull that tight. So see how we're going there? I have three in that side. I need two more in this side. I got one. Pass through here. Picking up two, passing through those two. Pass back through these two. Hold it between your fingers so it don't loosen up. Back through these two. Back down. These two again. Pull that tight. I have one more row. Picking up two beads. Pass into those two there. Then I have to reinforce. Back through them again. Back through these one more time. Okay, now I have to connect this to my bracelet. I'm going to take the needle, pass through these two beads. Because I'm coming out this way, I have to go through here. So if you're coming out this way through the, on these beads, not the way I am, but maybe you're coming out this way, you would have to come in through that way. Pull that through. Take the needle, pass back through these beads and again I have to pass through these a few times like I was doing so see that when you pull it so it comes together and I need to reinforce this so I'm gonna go through it again back down Okay, now I'm going to go through these, all of these in this row, that's right, that's what I did before. Okay, we are now ready to do our um, flat beads for the top embellishment. So I'm going to get mine and get ready to do that. Okay, so I got my flat beads out and I have some swirly looking beads here so I kind of want them to lay where it looks good. So I have one going this way, one swirling that way, continued that throughout the bracelet. And um, you want to lay your flat beads on, figure out what pattern you want to come up with. Um, these here were staggered 
I could do the staggered because of the rounds and the hearts. Um, these here, because of how they're shaped, I won't be able to do any staggering, and because they're so wide. So um, I'm going to lay them down and put them on like this. Um, there's different ways you can attach these. Um, for example, with this bracelet, I came through four beads, these four right here underneath, okay? Came out, picked up a seed bead, this little round bead, a seed bead, and then I went back through them again. And then I went through those two, through those two, came down through these four, picked up my three beads, and then I circled back around. So there's different ways that you can attach them. With this one, after I did my loop, I came up through these two, picked up the heart, slid the heart down, all the way down, then I went through those two. And I have two rows in between these beads, two seed bead rows. So in this one, I also have two rows, there's one, two, in between those. And I only had enough to do that, so I'm happy that worked out. So with this one, I have two rows, so if you look, there's a row here and a row here. So after I came out from adding a heart, I went through these two, came down through those two, came up through one, picked up my square bead, skipped over four, went through one, then I went through two beads, two beads, pretending that this is, Pico is not here because it wasn't here when I did that. And then I came out through the heart, added the heart, so I continued that. Now, with the staggered one, this one, I think I have one row. Yeah. So with this one, when I added the beads on this one, I came up through one bead, put slid my little round bead on, went through three, I went through this entire row of six beads that's in between the heart and the round bead, and then I came up two, added my heart, went down one, and then I have, when I went down one, I came out and I went through six, so there's a entire gap, uh, one gap there, so I went through all six at one time. Then I came up one, added the round bead, went down through two, then I went through all six seed beads, came up through three, added my round bead, and because I did hearts on this, I did them up, down, so if you look, this heart's up, this one's down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, this one here, too, I did up, down with my hearts because you can wear the bracelet any direction. It doesn't matter which. That's why I did that. So um, there are different ways that you can add your beads on to your bracelet. I put these on here, and I was counting my rows, and I'm figuring that I'm going to have two um, rows of seed beads in between each one of my flat beads. So I'm going to go ahead, take these off, lay them down in my pattern, and I'm going to start picking them up with you guys and show you how to attach them on. Okay, so when we go to put our beads on, I'm going to want to skip every two rows. So I actually want to come out through the third row to add my flat bead on. Right now, I'm coming out this row, okay? So if I take my needle and I pass up through these two beads, and then I come out through these two, I'm actually not going to be in the right place to add this bead. Because this bead is four um, 60 seed beads wide. So in order for me to attach my flat bead properly, I'm going to have to take my needle and pass through this entire row and then come up through one bead in the next row. Now, you might have um, a different situation going on. That's why I explained to you about the other bracelets, what it was like with them. But um, this is how I'm going to have to do this one. So see that? I'm going to come up through one bead right there in my third row. Okay. And then I'm going to add my first flat bead. And I noticed with these beads that one side is prettier than the other. I think this side's prettier. So it's going to be sitting on there like that. So I need to, I'm going to zoom in, right here, 
I'm coming out this bead, I have to come straight down, skipping over four beads. I'm going to go through this one bead, like that. Pull that through. Okay. And I noticed that with the hearts, I had this issue. I needed to slide the bead down first and then pull this tight because it was not sitting right. And which side was prettier? I think it's this side's prettier. Okay. Make sure I keep those tails tight. So I just added on a bead, and now I'm going to add another one. But before I do that, I have to reposition my needle. So I skipped two rows here, okay? I'm in a third row. I'm going to skip two more rows and come through my third. So I'm going to take my needle, pass through these two, then I'll come down to the next two, and then up through one. Okay, so I'm coming out the bottom. Going up through two. Down through two. Pull that tight. As tight as you can get it. Oops. Right here is where my connection points at, so just have to pull those too tight. Now there's two rows. So there's my flat bead, two rows of six O's. I'm going to put my next bead right here. And um, I have these swirls going on in certain directions, so I think I have to go through it this way. Okay, so it's going to be laying like this. So I'm coming through this bead. I'm going to skip over four and come out through this bead. Okay, and I think I might have to do what I did earlier, slide this down, and then pull this tight so it lays properly. Okay, just like that. Now I have to reposition my needle again, so I'm going to pass through two. Then I'm going to go through these two. So here's two rows, that's the row I have my bead on, one, two rows. Now I'm in the next row where I'm going to add my bead, so I'm just going to pass through one. And I'm going to put my bead on right here. Okay, so looking at this, I'm coming out of this seed bead, skipping over four, I'm going to go through this one, which I'm kind of in a weird position to do this. Okay, coming through here. And I'm just popping this bead in place. One side's prettier than the other, so I'll pick the more colorful side. And there we go. So now I have to add on another bead. So I'm going to take the needle, pass through two seed beads. Then I'm going to go back down through two. Pull this tight, as tight as I can get it. I'm going to come up through one seed bead, and add my next bead. Let's see, I have to add it on this way. OK. 
Okay. So I'm exiting out right here and I need to skip over four and go through this bead. Okay. Pull that tight, and again I have to add another bead, so I'm going to go through these two. Pull my thread through, and then I have to go up through two. Before I pull that tight, I'm going to come back here and make sure that I have that tight. Okay. And then I have to go through one. And I'm going to add another bead. So coming out that bead, I'm skipping over four, and I'm coming out the one at the bottom. What did I do? I went through that loop there, so it's like time or not. Okay. I need to slide it down this direction and then pull it tight. And I think that's a good look inside. Pull that tight. Now I'm going to pass back up through two beads. Pull that tight and then go down through two. And then up through one. And I'm going to add <clears throat> spiral. So my spiral needs to sit this way. So I'm going to pass with the speed. I'm coming out uh, little blah, 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 blah. Coming out right here. I'm going to skip over four and go through the one at the top. So this is pretty easy. There's different ways, like I said, that you can add them to make your bracelet work for you. You just gotta play with it. If it doesn't turn out, you can take it apart. You don't have to take it apart all the way back to the square stitch. But um, if you have a bead all or you can use your needle, you can carefully, you know, pick it apart, take the top off, and adjust it if you have to adjust it. Because that's what I did. Um, which one did I have to adjust? I think this one had to adjust. This one was not the easiest to make because it was staggered but um, I did have to um, play with this one to get it just right. It's all about the experimenting and um, playing around see so what you can come up with. So this is it. Just keep going adding your beads on the top until you get over here to the button and I'll show you what to do next. So I kept on going and I'm now down here Exiting out, I added my last bead, and I'm going to close this up and show you guys what it looks like. I'm really happy with how it turned out. See, I have the just the right amount gap there and there, and this button is kind of close in color to that bead, so that's why I use that button. So I'm pretty happy with that. So the next thing to do, where am I at? This end. The next thing to do is to weave our needle out through the end here, either this side or this side, so we can start doing the edge. So, 
if I took my needle, I'm coming out of this bead in this direction. If I took my needle, went through here, then out through all those, and back and forth, I would be using up a lot of thread. So to save thread, I'm just going to go through two beads at a time. So I'm coming through this bead here, so I'm going to pass through these two. And I'm just going to zigzag to the end here. Make sure you pull it tight as you go. And then I'm going to go through the next two. Again, pull it tight. Up through the next two. And then I'm going to have to go pull that tight. I'm going to have to go on this side of the button to get three, through these two beads right there. See them coming out there? So when I pull this tight, I have to make sure that I don't get caught around that button. I have to jump over top of it. So make sure the thread's on this side, then pull it through. And then I'm at the last row, and I'm just going to sew through all of these because I need to come out an end bead. Just like this. Okay, that's exactly how I want it. Now I'm ready to do the pico on the edge and I have to get my beads to do that. Okay, so right now I am exiting out of this seed bead and I need to be coming off this thread right here. So to do that, I'm going to take my needle, go underneath that thread, pull it through until I have a little loop. See that there? And then I'm going to pass through the loop one time. And then when I pull it down, I'm right there on top of that thread. See that right there? So now I'm going to do my seed bead. So I have an 8 11 an 8 just like that. I'm coming off of this loop of thread. I'm going to come underneath here. See that right there? Grabbing that thread, pulling it through. And then I'm going to pass my needle back through the 8 on this side. Slide that down. And there we go, we have our first one. So I'm going to pick up an 11 0. Because I'm coming out of an 8 0 right now, I'm exiting out of the 8 0, I have to pick up an 11 0 and then an 8 0. And then I'm going to take my needle and go through the next loop of thread right here. See that? Pull that through. Pass my needle through that 8 0. Bring that down, pull it tight. P pick up another 11 and an 8. Go underneath the next thread. Pass my needle through the 8 0. Pull that down. Again, an 11 0 and 8 0 underneath this thread. I like coming up to the back side so when you're doing this try to keep it consistent. I always come up through the back to the top. Don't go from the top to the back and then back from the top to the front. Just you know keep doing it the same way every time so it looks good. Okay so there we go. We got a few done. So this is pretty simple. You're just picking up an 11 0 and 8 0. You're going under that thread right there that's exposed, sticking out on the side of our bracelet. Coming through the back. Pull the thread through. And then you're passing through that 8 0. Pulling it tight. And just keep going. It's really simple. Picking up an 11, picking up an 8, through the next bead, or to the next hole, not bead. And then when you go through the hole, you go through the, back through that 8 0. 
an 11, and an 8. For the back of the bracelet, I'm going through that thread there. Passing my needle through the 8 -0. So I'm going to keep going, doing this stitch all the way down the entire length of the bracelet. And then when I get down here, I'll show you what to do next. So keep going, doing this stitch. So I just completed the one side, and it might be hard to see with my bead mat, but that's what it looks like. And now I'm now all the way down here. And remember earlier, I had to exit out this row coming out of this bead. So right now I'm coming out of here and I have to get over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle, pass through this 11 -0. I already, you know, put my last pico on. So I'm going to go through this 11 -0 and through the 8 -0 right there. Okay. Pull that tight. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to pass down through these four. Get this thread out of my way. And since I have a thread path right here, I'm able to jump over to this side. and come out where I need to right here because then the thread will go like that so I'm going to go through here okay and I'm going to do what I did earlier I'm going to take my needle go underneath this thread make a loop and go through the loop one time this is just so that our thread sits on top right there where we need it to. We're not actually doing it for the tying knot purposes. We're just trying to get in the right spot. And then I'm going to continue on with my 80, my 11, my 80. Picking those up, I'm going to go right here to the next thread, pull it through, pass the needle through the 80. Pull it tight and just continue the same stitch that we were doing on the other side. So I picked up an 11080 under this thread. Pass my needle through that 80. and I just continue doing it. I actually like to pop these beads out like that and pull it tight because see when you do that look how tidy it looks. It's very nice. So just keep going doing this until you get to the other end of your bracelet. There's my 11 80 through that thread right there on the back side. Pull it through, pass the needle through the 80. Okay, just keep going doing this till you get to the other end, and I'll show you how to finish the bracelet off. But that's what it looks like so far. It's pretty darn cool. So I kept on going, and I got both sides done. Now I'm ready to tie knots. It looks pretty good. And I realized that I actually have about two and a half feet extra thread left over. Usually when I make these, especially this one, I almost ran out of thread on this one. I was really close to not having enough thread, but I did manage to finish it. This one here, I think I had maybe a foot extra thread. And, and this one, like I said, I didn't even have enough to do the Pico edgings. But I think because of how I added the beads here in the middle, that's why I have extra thread. I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to tie knots now. I have to get this tail here out of my way. I'm exiting right here out of my last stitch. I'm going to take this needle, go through this 11 0, 
And then I'm going to go down through this 8 -0. And then I'm going to go through this whole row right there of six O's. Okay. And because my thread is so long, I'm going to go through another row because this one here I will have to tie knots in this area. So I don't want to get stuck and break a bead trying to pass through so I'm just going to pass through here a little bit because I have so much extra thread but if your thread is shorter you will want to start tying knots in there let's see I'll have to go through here this place that I'm at right now under that bead it's a little tricky to tie knots under there I didn't really do that I have one more bead to pass through right here that one there and then I can um, come to this side, start tying knots. Let's see. Okay, so I'm passing through two there. And it's a little hard to see because I have these beads in the way. But basically, what you're going to do, you can see the light coming through my bracelet. You're going to take the needle and you're going to pass down through like right here see this hole there's a hole over here you just want to catch the thread that's coming right through this row and tie a knot there and then after I tie a knot I go through these two tie another knot here come through those two pass through these two here tie a knot I just go through it tying knots in here this is where I tie them in between those beads there okay I don't tie the knots on the edge because they will be seen you can't hide them and um after I finish tying knots with this one, of course I go on to another thread and I do the same thing. I tie the knots in between. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot and show you right here I am. It's a little hard to see. Take the needle, pass down through this hole, pull through. I have a little loop right here. I now have to sew back up. Let's see. Right here is where I'm at. So I'm coming right up through this hole. Okay. On the other side of the same bead. Careful not to catch on to anything on the back. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to pass through this loop two times. There's one. Here's two, right there, pull the knot down, okay, and then pass through two beads. And if I can't pass through two, I'll just have to pass through all four. Let's see, I'll wiggle it. Okay, I made it through. Okay, now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to tie another knot. So, I am coming out right here. I'm going to take the needle, pass down through that hole, beside my bead, pull the thread through, leave a loop. Then I'm going to come up on the other side of the same bead. right here see that that bead right there come up through here again make sure you don't catch anything on the back let's make sure my knot's in the right place yep it is okay I'm gonna pass through this loop twice Pull my knot down right here. And then pass through these two beads. Okay. 
Then I'm going to pass up through these two and tie another knot. So I just keep going using up my thread. I like to reinforce the bracelet going through all the 6 o seed beads, just the, the base seed beads. Maybe you're using 8 o's. You want to go back to those and reinforce it. And again, after I get done with tying knots in this one, I have to come back to this one and tie knots with this one. Um, it's really hard to tie knots underneath the button. So what I do is I take my needle, put it on this thread, go down through these two beads, then I go up through those two, down through these two, and I start tying knots in here. Okay? And then you'll have to come down here to these other two threads. Now, I use two pieces of fire line. Each piece was 12 feet long, so I have four threads that I have to tie off. So when I come down here to tie these off, I take one of these threads and I go that direction with it, zigzagging back and forth, tying knots that way. Then I remember that I have to go the opposite way. So I take this thread and I go in that direction. So one's going that way and one's going that way so you don't get stuck when you have to pass through the beads because if you take both of these in the same direction tying knots you'll get stuck. You won't be able to pass through a bead because there's a knot in that hole. So make sure that you take one one way and one the other way. Now if you're doing more threads, or yeah, more threads because I'm doing two 12 foot pieces. Maybe you don't want to work with that much thread. Maybe you're doing um, six foot at a time. You will have more tails to tie in. So uh, that's one reason why I like to use uh, 12 foot pieces. But this is it. It turned out really nice. It's beautiful. I have to tie all my threads in and I'll be done. This is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and like me on Facebook. And don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry you've made from my videos on my Facebook page and follow me on Pinterest. Thanks for watching.